Chatria. Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to the August 2016 1v1 tournament. I'm your host, Shadow Fury 333, along with. Ah, Floris. I'm here. Hi. And we're going to be casting this tournament. So it's going to be a Swiss tournament at first, and then moving on from there into a double elimination for the top four. So those five round Swiss, which should hopefully deal with the problem we had last time, which was that the Swiss took. Or well, it wasn't totally fair, but yeah. It should be good. So we're having that, and then when that's... So that's into double elimination. Starting out, I'm going to be... I kind of want to cast Orphelius and Capricious. Everyone is here too, so yes, we've actually worked out how to organize a tournament. How about that? We've actually <laughs> got this thing made. sorted out. Progress was indeed made. Alright, so... All right, so I want to do Orphelius versus Capricious first, but we have Kshatra versus Fail Thoughts, Orphelius versus Capricious, Sprong versus Ikens, Clone versus Aguero, and Stuart 98 versus Nemor as our first round today. So I think Capricious versus Orphelius is a great way to start it off. I don't know who they are. They haven't started yet. I mean, it's... Yeah, everyone's here, though, thankfully. So, I think that Orphelius, I'm wanting Orphelius versus Capricious because I'm pretty sure that is going to be the most even match. Probably. Spring icons could be good. Clone, Sigiro, I am not sure about. And the other two are uh, wild cards to me. Yeah, I think Stuart and Nemo is an even match. I think that Kshatra and Felthas, from what I've seen, is actually a surprisingly close match. I don't, I wouldn't call it even. Felthas has the advantage, but Kshatra. I've watched a few games of Kshatra versus Felthas, and man, Kshatra is scary. Especially if it starts getting any territory, Kshatra just takes over everything. It's he's the, the slow and steady uh, player. He's kind of weird. He actually does both. He he can be slow and steady. He can just throw a bunch of scythes at you and expect you to deal with everything. So it's not really... It's hard to really say. But yeah. Okay. I see... Uh, okay, let's see. Capricious and Orphelius are set up. If they, they can start the game, if they like. Yep, they are, they are going. We are going to be beginning very shortly. And we're playing Cold Snap. Which is good for a best of one. <laughs> I'll put it that way. It's a good map, it's just that for a best of one, it's fine because it will take a while. Exactly. I think it's a really good map for 1v1 indeed. And also for a one round, uh, one game round. Yeah, because otherwise you end up with very weird situation. No, like, Cold Snap will take about half an hour. Let's just put it that way. It's going to be long. It should be good. You get some interesting matches here. You get some... Oftentimes you will get things going off into Strider level territory, and yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty exciting. That's nice. I, I've had a couple of good games here myself too. Yeah, good so games. If, if you guys like Striders, well, the thing is, you really have space to play with. You can do macro games. You can do drops. There is plenty of room for flanking. Uh, you can do gunships and airplanes, you can do big ground armies, everything has its place on this map. That's why I like it. Yeah. The downside is if you don't like macro, then good luck. <laughs> this is a large map, has a lot of metal, you're going to be getting large armies pretty quick. But yeah, other yeah, than that, that, that... That's one of the dimensions of a one, good 1v1 game. True. Oh, up to what, which point can you manage, and when you're better at it than your opponent, then you should have an edge. Yeah, and this is a map that will basically provide that test. Yeah, not as nuts as a uh, Comet Catcher. And it's also more interesting. I do like the terrain of this map, because you have mountains. Yeah, yeah nice even spiders. You can back. do great things with spiders here. Oh, yeah. I would actually say spiders have a really nice advantage, especially in 2v2. 
because then you have someone else covering the longer game. Because spiders do have the advan the disadvantage of movement speed, but even but in one v one, I've seen spiders do a lot of good work. And Orphilus looks like they're planning on going for spiders indeed. So and they start has, to a hill, close to a hill, which makes sense. And on the other hand, we don't see anything for Capricious yet. I don't I don't know what they're planning. Oh, there we there we go there we go. Cloaky bot factory for Capricious. What else? <laughs> Capricious yeah. is the Cloaky man. I mean, I agree with that too, just because Cloakybot... I mean, I sort of agree with it. Cloakybot has Rockos to deal with spiders, and Glaives are remarkably quick. So that is going to be a thing. But Orphilius, on the other hand... It's a good all-round factory, uh... Yeah, exactly. Orphilius does have the advantage of terrain, but I would say that Cloakybot factory is a solid pick. Yeah. It also gives the, the spider player uh, more options for scouting with the fleas. He gets it more information and he gets it quicker. You mean... Oh, yeah, yeah, right, because he has the fleas. If you fleas want to know the start location. Oh, yeah. Well, fleas are a map hack. They're, <laughs> they're a legal map hack. Sort of. <laughs> sort of. I mean, you can kill them. It's just that they'll end up everywhere. Anyone who knows how to play Spiderbot Factory will be putting fleas everywhere on the map. And that's exactly what Orphilius is doing. They've got fleas all along the center of the map. And a couple more going over. None staking out the expansion to the northwest, though. I think they figured out by now that Capricious is at the southwest. They've seen the Glaives come forward. It would make the most sense that Capricious would be in the southwest. Yeah. And yeah. Capricious is scouting. Is not scouting the start location of uh, Orphilius. No, they're start. They're scouting that one last. I, that might have been why Orphilius took it. I've seen Orphilius do a pretty good job of knowing how to play maps and start locations before. Um, it was a Red Comet game versus Clone, I think, where he actually just took one by cheese. <laughs> But uh, that was as soon as he uh, figures out um, there are spiders, he can rely on glaives and expansion uh, oh, for a bit. Capricious already knows. Capricious encountered one of the yeah. fleas right at the start of the game. So Capricious knows, and, and now, now they know build, where Orphilius uh, is. Yeah, now he can skip on defenses a bit. Widespread uh, defenders or a single LT will do, or maybe even just one or two glaives in, the, in your base, and he can... Uh, queue up another constructor and expand uh, much more quicker as, than when you were playing uh, vehicles or jumpers. Yeah, that's that's exactly what because Capricious your is opponent doing. does not have a strong rating uh, option. Oh, on top of that, we see sides and warriors coming up for Capricious. Sides being the more nice. interesting one. Warriors, I mean, they're not bad. Later in the game, they will be much more handy. Right now, it's it's good, but sides are going to be scary. Like Orphilius doesn't know this is coming. And shouldn't, because this is on a delay. <laughs> so even if they're watching the stream, which I don't believe they are, I don't see them in the lists at all. But yeah, this is on a delay, so they don't know that it's coming. This is great. Um, Capricious stopped moving in with the free glaives in their lower right. He just keeps watching that big open space. That natural choke is not a choke to, the, to your opponent, so there's no real point putting him in that particular spot. <laughs> I think uh, they're better off somewhere more closer to the tail and to the center. And only well, one uh, controlling the, the edge of the map. Yeah, that's a little weird. Now I think about it. Because, yeah, there's like Capricious has all these metal extractors here with one Lotus, and there's a hill which spiders don't care about. Yeah, he wastes all of them <laughs> to defend this. Ah, well. I mean, Orphilius has to defend a bit. But if you look at the economy, though, Capricious is taking full advantage of the matchup. Like, Orphilius yes. has a much smaller economy than Capricious right now. Capricious accessing, actually, at this point, starts to... Are they going to put some production on here? No, they're, they've are they got no extra production on their factory. All right, that's going to be a bit of a problem. First but attack yeah. with real units. And Orphilius... They're right back into Venom. Yeah, no kidding. Orphilius needs to do this. They're, like I said, behind economically. And Capricious... Ooh. Oh, Capricious, the lightning gun, responding in kind. That is a very good move. Uh, it's just in time. Out of there. <laughs> just in time delivery, that's what we call it. Oh, did that morph just finish? I, thought... I think the defender on top. Oh, the defender, yeah, yeah, that helped. But the morph for the lightning gun was a bit older. Yeah. yeah. All right, and Scythe coming in here. There's another Scythe over to the southeast, right by Orphilius' commander, just there to scout out. And it looks like... <laughs> wow, that's dangerously close to the decloak radius. If that defender was like one unit length further south, it would have decloaked the scythe. That's got it. I mean, Orphilius yeah. doesn't know yet, but that would be painful. Orphilius is repairing his uh, spiders. I, cool. 
Yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, really, that's something that should be done more often. A spider is an expensive unit. I mean, these are 280 each, 200 for Venom. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's at the threshold where I say, yeah, repair. I actually hadn't even really thought of that myself because redbacks are fairly frail, but yeah, they're yeah. not cheap. He that's had a good, a good encounter and he returned, uh, retreated from that little fight with the and, commander. Ah, uh, speaking and, uh, of expensive got to keep units. All his units. Speaking of expensive uh, he units. Lost his life. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Oh, well. I mean, moderately expensive units. They're not like 800, like, say, a Reaper, but still, that's. Ouch. So yeah, Orphilius now knows that Capricious has Scythe, and Orphilius has Fleas. So Scythe are <laughs> definitely neat, but... This is the point where you want to start thinking about factory switching. You have the, you will have the economy now. They have the economy now. Both of them do. income. Yes. Or you switch to a bigger unit, like uh, a Grave. Oh yeah, for Orphilius. For Capricious, on the other hand, the Warriors are already up, so... That much has been kind of taken care of, and it looks like Gauss turned in the front. Oh, oh, we're seeing this again. I don't know if you saw you saw this before, right? In the last tournament, the Gauss turns no. along the corridor. I mean, it wasn't a tournament match. There was a match that is the first time I've ever seen it. The only time I've seen it, which is a Gauss turret in a corridor, and like three or four Gauss turrets, and it's really efficient for dealing with basically any amount of units. Because the amount, the armor and the line splash together, it's like any that aren't firing can't really be killed. And the ones that are firing are just line splashing everything. It's mm, interesting. interesting, but different. It, yeah. You don't see Gauss very often. And all oh, the warriors, all right, the warriors got rid of the Venom, so that gives Capricious a bit of an advantage. Or Phileas, yeah, however, for, uh, Venom. going for the Crab, as you, as you had recommended. That's exactly what's being built up. Crab into Hermit. More size from Capricious. Wow, they really want to go for this. A few more glaives as well, but really the size of the thing. But the size they're... in the top right corner, that's... Ooh, hey. That was the perfect uh, timing to uh, start attacking those maxes. Oh, yeah, because they're right even. Like, Orphilius and Capricious are very nearly even on economy. There are no turrets Not on top right. No turrets. The flea is a bit further forward, and it would and die. both are out of energy. Ooh... Actually, the fact that Orphilius is out of energy makes that less useful. Just because Orphilius right now can't even use this metal. But hey, it's still a good <laughs> idea to kill it. There's no reason not to kill it. It's just... Orphilius is accessing at this point. As is Capri Wow, Capricious is really low on energy. Getting a fusion reactor, yes, but I don't is. really see that working out very quickly. I mean, but it's they're... on low uh, priority, uh, that constructor. That's building the fusion. That's kind of why I don't think it's going to come out very quickly. Because, yeah, that doesn't help. Capricious does have power plants being built in the front lines, though, so that's good, but still. And Crab finally up. Orphilius, I think they're going to start taking the advantage here. Capricious He's trying to take to the center. He's going to push straight through the center. There's nothing to stop that crap at the moment. Yeah, there's nothing to stop it. There's really nothing to stop anything going through the going around this choke point. I mean, that's the thing. is Capricious is building now, this choke point. I mean, now he's reinforcing with the, um, uh, the Hermits, which is awesome. He can just put yes. the exit point on the crab, and he will have a very strong uh, attack on the center. Yeah, Orphilius hasn't actually rally pointed that way, but still. Surprisingly, Orphilius is in fact attacking the center. I don't know why. I mean, Orphilius doesn't have to. That, that choke point's just a choke point for Capricious. Orphilius can just walk over the hill. They don't care. Mm -hmm. In fact, they'd be better off doing so, because the crab would get the but extra range. But losing those solar collectors... Uh... And giving away the Rex in the center is, uh, is a thing. I think Orphelius has this match. Like, just just from this, just from this swing here. I mean, Capricious just got the fusion reactor, so at least that's done. Gives him a bit of an advantage, or at least gets him back into the game. Orphelius, however, going for an air switch on top of getting the center completely. And the Gauss turret, there's only one of them. I mean, when I was talking about the Gauss corridor, there was like four of them that one time. And one as of them soon is as not it unfolds, it, uh, it dies to the creep. Ah, here's the Gauss Corridor. We have one coming up, a second one coming up afterwards, but still not enough. The crab is... <laughs> yeah, it's there. A bit like uh, Balance Annihilation uh, now, with the nano turrets and front uh, turrets. Yeah, it's just... The problem, like I said, is that Capricious is focusing on something that Orphilius does not have to attack. Orphilius is going for the commander. Like, that's what Orphilius, no. I'm pretty sure they're trying to go for, is get the commander. Yeah, they're trying to break the commander, because they want what they'll probably want to do is break the commander... And then that'll stop the front line in the center from really being built. And unfortunately, yeah, the crab, no, no, that no. needs to move back. That's one... Oh, wow! Yeah. The Gauss Quarter oh. actually being useful against someone who doesn't need to go to the choke point. 
Yeah, this is another of those things that's kind of broken. That's the, the repair on armored units is not affected oh. by the, the the armor bonus. Yeah. Also, the Orphilius here with the northeast has been damaged. They have some fleas trying to find the scythe, but the scythe is still there, still alive. So Capricious does have that damage dealt. And Orphilius with a few swifts already built up. Capricious, on the other hand, going for a Wavern with their own air switch into a vulture, so they want to know where to bomb. At this point, though, other than that Gauss Corridor, Orphilius is basically ahead, because all Orphilius has to do is attack elsewhere. They've got laser focus on the commander, and they really sh shouldn't. Or maybe build a few ravens and kill it that way. But yeah, that commander is not doing... Or Orphilius throwing in the towel? Really? Wow, yeah. okay. I mean, other than... Okay, yeah, I guess the economy, but still, that was... I guess they it figured... wasn't over yet. But, uh... oh, I don't know, that was weird. I mean, he yeah. was behind, but on the other hand, uh, uh, Capricious did not have uh, uh, the means to make a good attack. Yeah, I mean, Orphilius was behind on metal income, but was ahead and pretty much on unit. Well, unit value no, was no, no. behind, but. Well, they had oh. their army brought to bear. Yeah, the, the, the nano turret BA. Uh... Yeah, it worked. And he wasted the crap. I just can't believe that worked. On a map where you don't have, I, like I said, Orphilius was clearly focused on the commander. There's nothing of value in the center other than the commander. Everything else, that's further down in the base. I mean, Orphilius could have gone north, could have gone south, could have gone over the hill. Mm -hmm. They were clearly trying to kill the commander very directly because they probably figured Capricious would just expand with the commander down the center. And that, that was pretty much their downfall. So yeah, that is one game for Orphilius. I felt, always thought that um, you couldn't repair turrets that were damaged or for X time of seconds. That if a unit got damaged, then yeah. it wasn't you couldn't repair it for 10 seconds or something, or is that something that no, doesn't no, no, exist? No, 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 it's the auto repair, I believe. Ah, I mean, you okay. might be right, but I'm fairly certain what you're thinking of is auto repair, because auto repair doesn't work. Oh, shoot, I forgot to write down the match. All right, auto repair doesn't work. Okay, but you can use your regular repair, and it's not affected by armor. So let's I say my f armor is four times as big. It doesn't mean I get repaired four times as slow. Oh, armor doesn't matter. Like, I don't okay. think it matters. because. So you get four times the hit points for the same repair value. My understanding of armor... I haven't experimented too much, surprisingly, but my understanding of armor is that you have... Your armor is just damage reduction. It's not extra health, because the the... The crab doesn't have its health tripled when it's in that mode, when it's siege mode. No, it receives two thirds less damage. Yeah. It's just that's, I'm pretty sure that's the big difference. So I would imagine that he, like, in theory, repair should just work. And it should work by the actual health value. So it should work as if the crab had 4,000 health. Even though the crab effectively has 12,000 health when it's crouched up. Uh, anyway, it, it works in a. Orphelius should have recognized that it was not uh, winnable with so many nano turrets and a, and a armored turret. Yeah, I... And he should just stay back and focus on the flanks. Stay back, flank he around. Had a good, uh, he had a good uh, amount of aircraft, too. And that's the thing, too. He had the aircraft. He could have ravened or wolverned their way into just killing the commander off. And then once that's done, everything else will just fall. Scout uh, the map to see what was going on. Yeah, yeah. Fall. Good vulture. Man, that would win the game. Capricious actually had one of those on. Defenders. Oh, wow. The other two games uh, already finished. Yeah, so Kshatriya lost to Felthas, and Sprang lost to Ikens. Glow and Zagero are still going. Stuart, 98, and Nemor. I'm not sure what's going on there, because I see Stuart, 98. I don't know where they... Oh, maybe. Yeah, it looks like they're probably... Probably done? I don't know. He's alone know. in a room. Yeah, Nemor. Maybe uh, crushed. Oh, I think. Or the lobby crashed. Either that or Nemor actually didn't show up. Surprisingly, because I thought the check in was based off people who are actually here. Where did Nemor go to? Okay, this is. kind of bad. Mm -hmm. Nemor is here. I'm uh, watching, uh, rejoining the game now. Oh, okay. He's just not in the lobby. 
How long is... Oh, the game's almost done. Wow. It's been going for 70 oh, minutes. Oh, okay, okay. Sprung pointing out, to correct the repair thing, that the repair actually... It goes a quarter rate at damaged units. So you were actually right. According to Sprung. Okay, thank you. Oh, is the Gyoto vs. Clone just starting? And Sprung confirming my suspicions about how repair works on armored units. I think Sigeto vs. Clone might not have actually happened yet. Oh, it has happened. Okay. Yep. And Clone won. All right. And Stuart and Nemo is the last one left. Which I'm is watching uh, Stuart versus Nemo now, and it looks like Nemo is uh, has almost won. He has a big group of Lico's. Okay, hang on. I'm just gonna bombing jump. everything. What the? <sighs> if you five Lico's in a one v one, you are on the winning hand. Yeah, that, that's very true. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not sighing at you. I'm sighing at the fact that the bloody antivirus thinks that spring is bad. <laughs> you idiots. Maybe it is. Well, I mean, they're not. It's not malware. I don't know. I okay. didn't read the source. Well, you can read the source, it. though. No, but I didn't. That's the thing. <laughs> I just assume, assume other people do it for me. Well, yeah, fair enough. But I imagine there's enough people who don't want the thing to be malware that it won't be malware. Yeah. I seriously doubt that JK or Clute just snuck something in there. They're they're not evil. <laughs> Would be a... No. All right, well, let's just check out... I'm going to check out Stuart and Nemore for a sec, too. So let's just... Let's just dot wars this a little bit. So yeah, this is Stuart and Nemore. Stuart looks like they went for... Sh Actually, shield versus shield. Stuart in the southeast, Nemore in the northwest. Nemore is apparently a bit of an economic advantage this whole time. Going... Wow, Felon's five minutes in, too. So Thug Felon coming in for Nemore. Stuart looks like they wanted to go for a... Th Felon Aspis Ball. Not a whole lot of anything else, though. Felon Aspis Bandit. Versus all the felons. That is a lot of felons coming in here. And otherwise, wow, Nemore is getting. Feels like they're getting pushed back. They got pushed back, but. Ah, that's how they're taking the game. Nice Thunderbird there. Taking out Stewart's forces, although it looks like not a whole lot of damage dealt ultimately. Ooh, this is one hell of a Dante. I'm not there Please. yet. I'm at the Wyvern. <laughs> it's wrecking Shield Bolt. <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot oh of Wyverns wrecking the north side, too. So it looks like there's just going to be Nemore damaging the north side. Everyone on the north. No one really attacking the south. No, the Thunderbird he attacks here. Versus shields. Oh. oh, that's what it is. It's a bunch of felons and convicts for Nemore. That's how they're doing this. And unfortunately, it's not working out too well, losing all the felons. But Nemo still managing to take a bit of terrain. Economy is still fairly even, about 15 minutes into the game. And neither player has gone for anything huge. A lot of wyverns from Nemo, though. And... Wow, really knocking those around. And yeah, the Wyvern's just taking everything out. So it looks like Stuart is definitely losing terrain. Slowly but surely, thanks to Wyverns, despite their best efforts, despite their defenses and everything, it's going to be really tough to get in. Still Stuart holding on pretty well. Gotta say. Has some chainsaws, getting a missile silo as well. And a Dante, there's the Dante from Nemoor coming in here. Getting rid of that Aspis. Actually, that's actually kind of... That's pretty... Surprisingly useful Aspis there. I'm particularly not very fond of area shields because I find they get hit too easily. And there we go. Stuart throws in the towel thanks to the Dante. But yeah, I don't really care much for area shields. Personally. But yeah, so that was that game. Mm -hmm.
Looks like Nemo had the advantage <laughs> for most of the game. Actually, all of the game, really. Nemo had an economic advantage the entire time and a unit advantage. It's just a matter of grinding down Stewart over the course of 20 minutes. So yeah, that's that. That was round one. So now we are moving on to round two, which is going to be between a bunch of other, well, a bunch of the players Peoples. against different matchups. Okay, uh, let's Ooh. see. Ooh, and capricious. Who to pick? Clon, capricious, fail this, and I. Let's do fail this and icons. We don't yeah, that sounds we good. To... All right, so fail this and icons. I will mention that to the main room, because the main room is the one that... Or the tourney check-in room. There we go. Or wait, no, it's not the one we gotta go. Where? Okay, let's just find Felthaus and Icons. Yeah, this is still here. Alright, this is coming up to a good start. So we're on to round two. It'll be Felthaus versus Icons. I don't know what the map is, though. Each... Uh, Look it up in the twenty frets. Yeah, each map in this tournament is all separate. So yeah, we have Clone, Felthas, Capricious, Icons, and Nemor winning their first matches. Good job to all of them, but we're still going. Because the way this is going to work is whoever's in the top four moves on to a double elimination bracket. And everything else is just the Swiss, and that's how it's going to go. I don't know why I'm playing. Okay, where is... Alright, cool. So we're going to have Failed Ops versus Icons. And like I said, the map is determined by the tournament. Every single map in the Swiss round, each round of the Swiss round, has a different map. And then the double elimination is just... I think it's a random map for the first one, and then loser picks the other two. Oh, cool. But for Swiss... And you, you work uh, down at least in the tourney front? Oh, bo to bottom uh, for the first five rounds. Oh, no, apparently not. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm mistaken. Yeah, I don't see it there. All right, so I don't know what map is going to be next, but I know that it's going to be a set map. Oh boy, small divide. <laughs> what? You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> no, that's probably the default. Uh, yeah, that, the, that's, that the is the default. I, I don't really see that being a thing. Oh, it's like... this, is... this is 2010 flashbacks. 2010? I'm thinking 2007, <laughs> if not 2000. 2000. Like just 2000 flat. <laughs> or maybe okay, it was banded planes. All right, it's banded planes. Good, that's a good map. I quite like that map. map. I played it a lot in uh, OTA. Banded planes or small or small divide. Small divide. Oh yeah, yeah. Something in banded planes. One of those OTA maps. Map. <laughs> yes, it is one of those maps. I really should say 1997, just because. Yeah. Yeah. Because. Exactly. But I also like this one. <laughs> 